Okay. I think we should be fine. Okay, everyone in Facebook, I think we are live. <laughs> Let me see who's in Facebook right now. I'm just connecting to my desktop here, but I, uh, yes, I see us here. Great. Oops. Okay. Hey, if you're in Facebook, say hello and let us know that you are there with us. Good evening. This is going to be part two of our conversation about offense. So this is overcoming offense part two. We have a lot to cover. So I want to make sure I'm going to, we are going to start on time. Um, but maybe people are busier this uh, this weekend or because I have uh, gave the announcement too late as well. I don't know, combination of both, <laughs> maybe. Hello, Tita Maddie, good evening to you. This is Rachel, hi. Good evening, guys, in Facebook, good evening in Zoom. So we have uh, Robert and Joe, my husband, Saldi, Cindy so far in our Zoom. Let me see. Let me know, guys, how's my audio, how's my, my video? I'm using a different uh, earphones right now, so I hope I'm coming a, out you clear. A, you have a squeak in your audio. A squeak? Yeah, it's clear, Again. but every time you stop talking, it, I hear a squeak, at least on my end. Do you hear a squeak right now? Yeah, maybe you have a mouse. <laughs> I have a mouse. Yeah, that's squeak mouse. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> What is going on? I don't know how I can fix that. It still is, you still hear it? Mm, speak again. Hello, hello. Good. Uh, it's fine. Good evening. I know, it's fine. I, because I'm just... using a small fan in front of me. I don't know if that's, that's an. No, um, it's, a, it's, I think it has something to do with your mic. There's a squeak, like I don't hear the okay. fan. I see, I hear it when at the end. But then, if it's just me, maybe everybody else is okay. All good. Sabi ni Cindy. Yes. All so good. people Sabi in Cindy. Facebook, hello. Uh, I see it. Myra. Yes, Cindy Sheila. has a. Major being is Cindy. That's why she doesn't hear the speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, I canceled that. Yeah. Cindy, you gotta speak out and say cancel that. <laughs> anyway, I see. Um, and oh, no, says oh, I no, can no. hear fine. Okay, maybe I'm the only one who hears the squeak. Hello, hello, hello to all. <laughs> Hi, sis Van. Good hello. evening. Good evening. Hi, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, mga may ingay nandito na. Hi, hey guys. Good evening. Yeah. Happy Saturday, Kaloy. Man. Hello. Bakit ang dilem? I can't see you. We're in the car. We're in the car. Eh. Are you guys driving? Oh, you're driving. Yes, yes. I see, uh -oh. I see. Okay. Okay. And then from Facebook, we have Kat, Arlene, Adrian, Michelle, this is Anne, uh, Rachel. Uh, sino pa here? This is Myra, Ate Lane. Good evening, guys. Klang, hello, good evening. I, I, uh, good evening to you. Happy Saturday, guys. Oh, it's 8 o'clock now. Let's go ahead and get like started. There's so, many, there's so many more people. Marami, when... I, I, I have a lot of things to cover. I have a question. There's so many more people in Facebook Live versus Zoom. Why are we even doing it's a Facebook Live? Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just wondering. It's like... Come on! I mean, it's 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 more fun. It's more fun in Zoom Philippines. Zoom and I know. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Baka later sila mag log in for breakout. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know if this is true, but is it faster in Facebook than in Zoom? Did you find that? 
it's faster. So maybe, or easier for people to connect in Facebook rather than Zoom. So anyway, okay, we have breakout. Thanks, thanks for bringing that up. We have breakout rooms uh, tonight after our discussion. Um, that would be nice, you know, to get to know you more. We can have more conversation. So log into that. Um, if you are in the prayer team, I did not uh, tell you, but heads up, guys. I may ask you to uh, facilitate one room. Um, anyway, yes, it's 8.02. Uh, let's go ahead. And can I, yeah, can I ask someone to open a prayer, if that's okay with you? I see MJ. Hi, MJ. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Can you lead a prayer for us? Can, wait. Parang ano ka? Okay. You're breaking up. I'll choose someone else. You're breaking up. <laughs> How about Cindy? To Cindy. What's going on with everybody? It's internet connection. Ah. <laughs> Let me pray. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, thank you for tonight. Saldi, are you okay? But is it my computer then? Or it's it's you guys? Because I can't hear Saldi now. What's going on? And you're cutting off as well. Oh, sorry. You, I've been uh, speaking all this time. I was on mute. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought everybody's like not with me anymore. Anyway, me let me just go ahead and pray. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, let me pray. Lord, thank you for this tonight. is what happens. Lord, I'm praying now. I know. I was saying, this is what happens when you're <laughs> trying to assign prayer to people. Why don't you just do it yourself? <laughs> 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 thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you for gathering us here. Thank you for this community. Um, Lord, I, I pray for our conversation tonight. I lift up everything to you, Lord. Everything that we're going to be talking about. Use my mouth, Lord, as, as your mouthpiece. And um, allow each and every one of us to receive a revelation that we can apply in our lives, Lord. Uh, so that we can be better. So that we can understand your word better. Especially in this aspect of offense. Um, We'll be able to break uh, every offense that is uh, probably hidden in our hearts right now, Lord God, and, and also be able to um, know how to handle uh, these situations when they come up better. Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge your presence, Holy Spirit. We guide us and um, be our, our, our teacher tonight and just allow us to receive from you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we glorify you. I plead the blood of Jesus over our conversation, over our internet connections, and over every family that's here tonight and that are going to be listening to this call. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, I'm observing you, our Saturday yes. night Bible studies. It's like uh -huh. there's about a, roughly a 30% participation versus our about power what? hour. Power hours, like at least three times more people in power hours. Bakit kaya? Yeah, why, because it's why a Saturday is night. Yeah, what's going on? Why is, it, is it because people are busier on Saturday nights? Maybe Saturday night's not good. Should we reschedule? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe we can reschedule so that our weekends are free. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can have two weekdays instead of... I don't know. One I'm just weekend, noticing that weekend? it's like. What are your thoughts, guys? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, but I, 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 I guess I see what what you're saying because personally, guys, with me and Saldi, it's actually weekends are busier for some reason. Weekends are are busier for us. So maybe for most of you, week weekends are busier as well. Is weekend know. busier? Um, it's only anyways, busy when we have Bible study. At least for me. <laughs> really? At least for me. I for don't me, know weekdays you. and weekends is the same. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Actually, no. Sa oh, sabi ni Jan, ano daw? Week, Let's go. Let's go weekdays daw. 
Hmm, Who said let's go weekdays? Jan. Jan. Because ah. Jan says we're going to go weekdays, we are going to consider that because it was Jan. <laughs> Wait, is that people who need to hear will hear. People who anong, needs to hear will hear. Kahit anong day pa yan. It's just, Tama naman, kahit anong day pa yan. I'm just here. I'm just wondering because it's obviously like the Saturday okay. Bible studies has about one third the people of people attending the power hours, roughly. And that's combining Zoom and ano, ah? Zoom and Facebook Live. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try something. Maybe we'll try weekdays, uh, two weekdays in a week. Okay. Let's experiment and see how many are gonna, going to Why don't you create um, a poll? participate. That's okay. Well, probably. Yeah. We'll see. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I have so much to talk about. Um, Oi, honey, I want to leave. According to them, uh, the people, I said, yes, Mondays, Wednesdays, please. Mondays, Thursdays. Interesting. Wow, people want Mondays. it on Mondays. Mondays. Okay. Pag-isipan ko yan. Pag-pray natin yan. But anyways, yes, I have so much to cover, guys. And um, and I want to leave room for conversation. Kahit na maliit lang tayo, kahit na konti lang tayo in our in our um, breakout rooms, it's actually good, you know, so that uh, we have more time to share, more time to, to engage with other people. Anyway, so again, this is the part two of our topic, overcoming offense. So I hope you guys have learned from part one. Uh, if you missed that, it was this Wednesday, so you can go to the Power Hours and look it up and, and watch the part one. So this is part two now. So. Um, let me just give you a very, very brief, I, I'm going to go through this very fast because this were the things that we discussed uh, on Wednesday. So we talked about offense and what is offense. Um, actually, bottom line, it's uh, people, uh, people get offended or we get offended. We do get offended because um, other people did not meet our expectation. That's bottom line. Expectation of what? Expectation of how, um, how we should be treated right, or, or how we should be valued, and also how others should be treated and how others should be valued, right? So we get offended with that one. And, and the thing is, and again, as I, have, as I have highlighted, the problem with this one, and we have a lot of opportunities to get offended because we see this all the time. And the problem with this one is our levels of expectations are all different, right? expectation, And our, our definition of how things should be are all different as well. So then, um, especially if you look at the world, right? The world will tell you, uh, will dictate what is normal to you, what should be normal, right? And what's not, what's acceptable and what's not, what you deserve and what you don't deserve, right? And a lot of times by default, if you're not paying attention, you will just receive what the world is telling you, right? It, and, and life is not fair. It, everything is not right you know all of these things now psalm 119 165 which is the anchor verse of this of this series it says great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them well bottom line what this is saying is that the bible says that if you love the word of god then nothing shall offend you and this is nice right uh if you love the word of god nothing as in nothing shall offend you. So are you, you know saying why? if you're offended, you don't love the word of God? If Based you're offended, God? if you're offended, you need definitely you, there's there's some there's an aspect in your life that needs to be filled with the word of God. So actually you can use offense in, in a way that um, it actually tells what but it, it tells you what you need to work on, right? It's like a filter or it's like a, like a red flag in your life. That's actually a way of, of using that, right? When you're offended about a specific thing, it start, start asking the Lord and start asking the Holy Spirit, what is wrong? Like, what am I not seeing, Lord? What is the lie that I am believing right now um, that caused me to get offended? It's actually a good way of, of, uh, of dealing with offense, right? But we'll talk more about that. Um, anyway, so when you love the word of God, right? When you know the word, then instead of the world telling you what is normal, 
what what you should uh what is normal to you what's uh, you deserve and with what you don't deserve, what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. Instead of the world telling you that, the word of God will tell you, right? And I think bottom line, that's the main reason why when you know what's in the word, it's going to be very difficult for someone to offend you, right? Because you're always going back to the word of God, not to the world, right? So we also define so what is that, offense is. Yes, Sally. Is that why I'm here up my offense? <laughs> working on it but you know i think i'm easier with you saudi than other people <laughs> anyway let's go back psalm 119 165 um it's that anchor verse again and and i have defined offend is actually from a greek word hebrew word make sure which means a stumbling block right bottom line um, offense is, is actually it stops you from experiencing something good. It stops you um, from experiencing your promised land, right? It is actually something that leads you to fail. It leads you to fall. It is an incitement, an encouragement, an open door to sin. Um, offense leads you to sin. And it opens the door to the enemy to, bottom line, steal the word of God from you. We talked uh, about that from Mark 4, uh, that's Mark 4, 17, right? When we talked about how the enemy sends you affliction, the enemy sends you persecution, and bottom line offends you so that he can steal the word of God from you. When the enemy steals the word of God from you guys, I, I'm just looking at three things. Like, what are the main things that he steals from you? The truth, right? Uh, the truth about your identity, that's number one. The truth about the promises, the things that God had already given you, number two. And the truth about your destiny, your purpose, your assignment. These are the main three things that, that the enemy steals from you, right? So let's just, for example, stealing the identity, your identity in Christ. The Bible tells you that you are an overcomer, that you have God's divine nature, that you carry that in you, that you have that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living inside of you, right? That every spiritual blessing has already been given to you, that you are the head and not the tail. That's what the Bible says about your identity, about who you are, right? But when you receive these truths in your heart, a lot of times, um, right away, right? The goal of the enemy is to immediately steal that word from your heart through what through that offense right and as i said mark 4 17 the enemy wants you offended so that he can replace those truths with lies and deception the world says now if you look at the lies and deception in the world it says you're weak you will fail you are rejected you're not accepted right um you're not liked by other people you will not accomplish anything you don't have the power to change your circumstances, whether that's health, relationship, finances, right? You don't have the power. You're stuck. You don't have any voice, right? You should be embarrassed of what you're doing. You know, all of these things are lies and deception, but this is what the enemy replaces your identity with, right? And again, if you are not careful, if you're not aware, you are just going to receive what the enemy tells you. Example of this is King Saul. We talked about King Saul, how he was offended, right? He got very, very insecure of King, uh, King David, or no, of David at that time. He wasn't king yet. But he got very, very insecure and in what cost him his life, his kingdom, and his family. Now, second thing is stealing the promises of God in your life. And we're talking about that promise of what? Promise of healing, protection, deliverance, promise of redemption, of restoration of relationships, a promise of increase and in abundance in every area of your life, right? Walking in divine nature. These are just some of the promises that you can find in the Bible. And these are the truths for you, for everyone, right? For everyone who's part of the kingdom. Now, when you receive these truths, again, immediately the enemy's goal is what? To steal that word from your heart and introduces offense, right? And replace the truth with lies and deception. Like what? The world will say, God may decide to heal you or not. It depends, you know, if he's in a good mood or, or not. God destined you to be poor, maybe. 
That's why you don't have any success. No one's protected in this world. You have to toil and sweat in this lifetime. You are you, who you are. Who are you to say you have power and authority? Right? Some people call it blasphemy. That's blasphemy for you to, to even say that. You're only human. Who here recognize that that's, those things are lies? Especially when, when someone says, Tao lang ako, tao ka lang. Okay lang yan, tao ka lang. May limitation ka, di ba? Some people, would, so you know, even us Christians, when you hear that, you would accept and say, oh, nga, eh. you know, because it's a good excuse, right? It's a good excuse to justify why I failed. But that's not what the Bible says. Again, the Bible says you are the head and not the tail. Now, example here is Michael. You would mention Michael, um, the wife of David. Because of offense, he became barren and fruitless, right? Unfruitful. Naaman. Now, with Naaman, it's good. He was offended, but he was able to process his offense, right? So then he was able to receive the promise of healing. And that's great, right? How about the older brother of uh, the story of the prodigal son? He was offended and was not able to enter the celebration. You know what? This is so good for, for me, again, because things in your life and things around you may be great, right? But then when you have offense in your heart, you're not going to see that. You're not going to be able to enjoy it. You're not going to be happy no matter, no matter what is going on in your life. You won't be able to see the blessings in your life. And maybe this explains why some people, you know, they seem to have everything in their life, um, everything that, you, that one could ever ask for, right? But then they're not happy. Some people commit suicide, right? And maybe, again, that's because the word of God is not in their hearts. They have been offended many, many times, and they were not able to process their, their offense. So um, that's stealing the promise. Now, the next one is stealing our destiny and our purpose, right? When you hear the word of God and the Lord says, uh, when you hear from the Lord, like a, a promise and, and um, uh, an increase and in acceleration in your life, and then you gain confidence to finally obey that new business that the Lord was telling you to do, or maybe start a ministry, or maybe share the gospel to a group of people. Right? When you hear that, um, whatever that is, you know, there's gladness in your heart, right? But then right away, the enemy's goal is to steal that promise from your heart and what? Replace it again with lies and deception through offense, right? So the world will say, who are you to dream big, bigger? What makes you special? You're not going to go to places. Take a look at the world. Everything is falling apart, right? Those are all lies, especially these days. You know, every, everything is filled with worry, with fear. Those are all lies. An example here is Moses. He got angry. He got offended. He was not able to enter his promised land. Everybody okay so far? Am I the only one here now? <laughs> I don't hear anyone. Saldi, how are you? Actually, you're the only one in uh, Facebook. I think it's not showing everybody. It's only showing you. No, I know. I'm talking about Zoom. Zoom? Anyway, let me just continue because I'm just... <laughs> let me just continue because <laughs> I am... It's just a um, review of what we talked about, right? But you know what I mean on Facebook? It's not showing... It's only showing who's speaking. The settings of... Yes. The setting. Is that how you want it? Oh, there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a better setting. When you talk, then you get shown. And it's only the speaker, speaker mode. Anyway, so Test let me see. Let's see if I popped up. <laughs> yes, it does. Speaker mode. Uh, just, just one second. Yes, it does. Speaker mode. Whoever's speaking. Anyway, stages of an offense. And we talk about this again. Uh, First, you nurse it. Uh, you guys are very familiar with this, right? When you get offended, when you get hurt, you nurse it. You take care of it. You entertain it, right? You cuddle it. You 
<laughs> you justify it, bottom line, right? And then the next one is you rehearse it in your mind, right? Between you and, and the enemy, you guys rehearse it. You play it in your mind. You talk to yourself about it. What really happened? What, what were the details? Who said this? What exactly happened? You know, and then your emotions get worse and worse. You know, so you, we we're very familiar with this with this process, right? We rehearse it, and then of course the next one is we disperse it, and this is how we uh, kind of end up uh, last time because this is something at least for me personally, this is the, one of the biggest revelations for me here. Dispersing when you tell somebody to talk about it, you vent out, right? Venting out to a friend, and what's really um, what's happening here is you're actually dispersing that offense, that spirit of offense to people around you, to your close friends, to your loved ones, to your parents, to your, to your children. And uh, Luke 17, 2, it says, it would be better for him. Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Talking about the next generation right talking about children but i don't think it's only limited to children right bottom line when you talk about your your hurt and your offense to other people you are dispersing that why when obviously you're talking to a close friend that close friend of yours is going to be offended as well <laughs> your parents would be offended as well even though they don't know the person you're talking about right but you honey, isn't that, isn't that, you know, if you're yes. offended, shouldn't you share it with, say, a small group? This is sharing, not dispersing. You may want to call it that way, right? And sometimes it is actually hiding behind sharing, right? Um, and that's why that, that's why we have to be very careful. I am not saying that you, you don't share it. And I think this is uh this is one of the questions from from Evie. I'm I'm gonna talk about this more later. But yeah, I'm not saying that do not share it with anyone. Period. Right. But bottom line, it is um spirit led. You know, you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, who should I share it with? Which, who should I share this situation to? Right. Who can give me proper counsel? Right. Not just to share, so that this this person is gonna um. Uh, you feel good because this person is going to side with you. It's going to feel bad with you, right? Then that's this person already. Anyway, let's. the fourth one is reverse it, okay? Now, hopefully, again, the goal here is we don't go through uh, rehearsing and dispersing before we reverse, okay? I know it's one, two, three, four, but it's not. It, I, I hope the order is not going to be that. When you get offended, yes, maybe take a few seconds to nurse it, okay? Give yourself some room to nurse it, fine, but then stop there, right? And get to reverse, which is Honey, the point. That's reverse such it. such a clear distinction because when you gave that one, two, three, four, I thought that was the process of when you get offended, you're supposed to nurse <laughs> it, then disperse it, then reverse it. <laughs> Very, uh -uh. very clear yes. distinction. You weren't clear last time. <laughs> okay, so I know that's why we have part two, right? So I want to make sure, guys, that again, I think I mentioned that last time, but anyway, but yes, make sure you don't get to uh, second step, third step before you reverse. The goal is to reverse right away. Now, it would be great if you get to that or when you get to that. Um, what Psalm 116 was describing, that you are never offended, right? Wouldn't that be great to not be offended at all? Then that's good. You don't have to go through any step. But just in case, right, you get offended, you get hurt. Now, okay, nurse it a little bit, give yourself a few seconds, and then reverse it right away, okay? We're going to talk about reverse because this is um, – basically talking about like what can we do to overcome this right how what are the steps what are the what are the things that we can consider to overcome offense but before question. i discuss I that let me just actually. discuss with you guys yes I have a question uh, is, this, go ahead. is this applicable to husband and wife for example the husband said something and the wife is hurt offended whatever now if the wife say does not speak to you in hours and days 
how does that work? <laughs> Speaking from my experience. <laughs> <laughs> Kaninong tanong yan? Sa'yo ba yan, Tabi? <laughs> Oy, hindi na ako ganon. Yeah. But listen, but you know what, Saldi? You're, you're getting cut off. Um, but definitely, that's what we're talking about. This Because you know what, guys? I think you get offended more to people that are close to you. Right? To your, to your spouse, to your parents, uh, children. To close friends, right? You get offended more um, because they're close to you. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm right or wrong, but at least just that's from my experience. Because if you don't know someone and they said something, you can easily brush that off, right? Like, okay, I don't, I don't really care because I don't know the person. But if someone says something, someone that you care about, someone that you care, their opinion and their suggestion and all that, and then they say something, take it to heart. Right, and that's why this conversation is very, very applicable to husband and wives, to children, to parents, to close relationships, definitely. And I think that's when you also have to watch your heart a lot of times because um, the enemy is definitely going to use that. Use people around you that you offended. Um, what was what was the question, Salvi? Is it applicable? Was that the only question? Is it applicable to husband and wife? Definitely. Now, what happens if the spouse <clears throat> choose not to talk to you for hours or days? <laughs> apologize. Just be the first to apologize and say, okay, let's talk about this. Apologize and talk hold on, about hold on. it. Right? Can I ask a but let's question? talk more. What We're going to talk about it. No, no, hold on. Hold on. I want to ask that yeah. question. Because what if the husband apologizes and the wife really is just so offended and still doesn't talk our days? No matter have, how much you apologize. Have him listen to these calls. <laughs> no, but the, you know what the thing is? Um, I think, and I don't know, think, people don't do things if they do not understand. Right? And it's the same way with people are not going to avoid something if they don't understand it. And that's why this conversation is very essential. Because we need to understand, okay, what is really happening when we get offended, right? What is really happening? What are the consequences of this? Right? And when we understand, that's when we can actually see the value of, I am going to um, give it extra effort, right? And I'm going to have this discipline, spiritual discipline of not get offended because I know the consequences, because I know what the enemy is doing, because I know what the word of God is saying about this, right? It takes knowledge and understanding. You can't just say to someone, did you know offense is so bad? Don't get offended. Do you think by you saying that to your friend, to your, to your family member, to your spouse, they're going to stop being offended? No, right? They need to understand. And that's why, again, it it's, takes time. You share, you minister, you share the word, right? Or share this, share this, this learning here. Share it with them. Anyway, uh, I'm, not, I'm not very comfortable with this. I keep on, this thing keeps on uh, falling off. Anyway, okay, so types of offenses. Uh, how do we have the time? 30, okay. <clears throat> types of offenses, number one, and we're so good at this, imaginary. So we have four types of imaginary imaginary offense guys there's such thing yes and this is um it's in your mind right uh, again prime example is king saul first samuel 18 saul he was very suspicious of david although david was very loyal he was a very loyal um uh commander to king saul right um and then speculative and vain imaginations come in you hear what is not being said okay that's that's a, an example of this you hear what's not being said i'm going to, going to give you an example i was sharing with a, a group of people one time and i was talking about spiritual authority and i said that when you when you hurt you, when you hurt your child your your children's feelings when they get offended right Pray for them and command the spirit of offense, command the spirit of, of hurt to get out, right? That's what I said. That's what I was sharing. And then someone said, 
in this agreement and with offense, right? He said, why don't you apologize? Why don't you apologize first? Uh, of course, right? Um, I did not say do not apologize. But then I was just saying something that's not too obvious, right? But it happens, right? In our conversation, people will hear what you did not say. Here's another example. Can when I your give an example? Tells you, Can... Sure. Yeah. But let, let me get, let, let I me want give to give one. an example when too. <laughs> tells you you're breaking up Calvi. yeah i'll say yes cow go <laughs> no when it, okay. the spouse it just happens a lot of spouse when it's not me huh and it's not sell but it's a real situation whatever when, <laughs> no. okay when i say one uh, thing and you hear a totally different thing i was like why did i say that and I, and i go straight to the exact words but you heard something totally different and that's what causes World War III. <laughs> yeah, but, but this is true. You know, it happens a lot in husband and wives, in marriage, right? Your spouse tells you, you need to eat less. And then you immediately say, are you saying I'm fat? <laughs> right? Someone said to you, what you said doesn't make sense to me. And then you start thinking, what I said was stupid. I made a mistake again. And maybe I should stop saying anything. I only say the wrong things. This is so embarrassing, you know. You, and then you start creating stories in your head. These are these are examples of what imaginary offense. You imagine another one is you imagine. Um, I'm admitting people. Are you able to see the people that are coming in? I think Saudi's internet connection is uh, kind of not stable. Anyway, so you imagine or thought of other meanings of what someone did. Okay, this is what this, the first one was, um, you, you're you hearing what was not said. Or imagining. Now, this one, I, one is you're, can you you're imagining um, other meanings of what someone did. You're breaking up. Now, for example, you, you got, uh, speak again more. No, Aine was saying, when Jir says to ako sa salamin, I hear him saying, I'm ugly. Oh, diba? That's another example. <laughs> when Jir says to me, you know, salamin. Yeah, see? Or someone says, eat less, and you say, I'm fat. <laughs> right? That's not what the other person meant, but then, of course, that's what you heard. Now, what about imagining a different meaning of what was said? right? Um, or what, what someone did. For example, you got scene zone. This is very, very common in group chats. Right? You said something and people did not pay attention to what you said. No one commented. No one replied to what you said. And then you now you think they ignored me. Maybe no, I'm not important to them. No one said an emoticon or a like. <laughs> no one liked my post. No one liked it. No <laughs> I'm posting again. <laughs> okay, say no. Okay, no one liked my my post. I I think that's that's um that's you know that's obvious, right? But what's not obvious and what the interpretation could be, no one likes me. No, it becomes you. It's not about you. It, it's just about the post, right? But then you extend it to about you. No one likes me. I'm not important to them. Maybe I should stop communicating. Maybe I should stop sending messages right and again these are lies this is when you start rehearsing and this is when the enemy feeds you with more lies with more deception during your rehearsal moment right and then uh, another one for example you were not invited to a dinner you were not invited oy nakita mo so facebook nagpost magkakasama sila hindi ka kasama hindi ka in invite so what are you gonna do you're gonna think Oh, I wasn't included. Maybe they don't like me. Maybe I'm not their friend anymore. Right? The rejection happens. The rege and who gives the interpretation is my question. And I hope you guys um, are getting this, that it's not necessarily just you, but the enemy feeds on that, right? 
takes advantage of that opening and he gives you more, gives you lies and deception. Now, Aine, I know you shared this in the first call, right? In a, in a part one, I'm just going to read what you said. You said, I remember they asked me for a contri contribution for our friend's surprise birthday, but they didn't surprise me on my birthday. <laughs> Okay, that's an example, right? You know, so hinigan ka ng contribution for someone else's birthday, but then when it's your turn, no surprise for you, right? Now, was, this happened to Aine. I'm sure she's not offended because she's... I don't know if she brought it up, I, so maybe she was offended. I don't think... <laughs> I hope you're not, right? Because you have um, already dealt with it with this one, but this is a good example. If this happened to you, you possibly are going to think, Ah, that friend of ours is probably more important than me. Mas importante siya, mas, mas, mas VIP siya kesa sa akin, you know. So, again, another lie, right? But 7 Corinthians 10, 5, again, says you need to capture those thoughts, right? Those strongholds, those imaginations that are from the enemy. These are lies from the enemy. Now, this one is a big one. And I think um, I brought up uh, this one as well. It's being offended at God, right? And I, I, I have this as an imaginary thing because it is not true. Because again, these are all just lies and deception from the enemy. It, and it's bottom line, what this is, guys, is misunderstanding of the old covenant law, right? The age of law versus you know the age that, of grace. That offended at God is kind of like a, as an example. Say you and your you and your friends, both of you were praying for. Spiritual uh, for a financial breakthrough, for example. Yeah, let's go financial breakthrough, right? And uh -huh. you were uh, in a really bad job. You both hate your job, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. your friend got promoted. She got promoted. She got recognized. Now yeah. she got a, 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 a new job, better position, higher times three, and you're still stuck in your job. And now you yeah. are offended, it's like God, why did you give her like a promotion and not me? You know. Now it becomes that's a lie from the enemy. Yeah. So if you don't the catch enemy probably that, is... you're gonna get offended and you're gonna start not wanting to do deal with God anymore and do more with God, and then you'll have your own life now without God, which is a lot of backsliding, by the way. Offense starts, that's why it backslides. So that's another lie. It's it's believing that God has favoritism, right? Oh, God gave that person my friend a promotion and he didn't give me my promotion or that other person got the healing how come i didn't get my healing right so you um but then what what does the word of god says that, the, that god does not play favoritism right um but see again it's those lies that enemy feeds you it's you not understanding um i think in general right i would say in this group konti lang ang may my my um many new alas but but a lot of a lot outside of this is a lot of people believe that their problems are from the lord and again that's that's coming from the age of law right when god punishes when god you know um brings you sickness brings you uh death right and and so then when it when something happens in your life you blame the lord you get offended right someone uh, got sick in a family and, and, and he or she died, you blame God. God, why did you take him or her? It's then, not understanding that that's not, the, God is not behind those things. And then here's another lie. All of a sudden, you get um, you know, ministered probably from a small, small group leader or someone else in church, and they say that, you know what, that's part of God's plan. That's why your husband, your, your child died early. It's part of God's plan because he's going to use that for a no blah, blah, blah. So basically what he's saying is that that was God's plan for your child. That is a lie. Yeah. And then Definitely because then here's, your, here's the next slide. The next slide, now you believe it because you feel at peace. Not, and now you have a different perspective of who our father is. Our father will take away your child at a young age if it is planned because it's his plan and I should be at peace at it. I mean, this is so messed up theology, guys. Yeah. But anyway. I think in general, this is this 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 one um, sacred cow 
So religion, right? Religious belief is, is actually what causes offense at God in majority, right? It's what causes, it's not understanding that these things are not from the Lord. Again, we read Mark 4, 17, right? Afflictions and persecution are not from the Lord. They're sent by the enemy to steal the word of God from your life. And the famous right. verse that uh, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came exactly. to have, it, have life and have it more abundantly. Now, these, mm -hmm. they're all, you know, I guess basically it's it's a very slight deceit from the enemy and all of a sudden you leave it and then with that opening, then all of a sudden you can come in and then get offended. and you can actually, I don't know. Hey, there's a question in the group. Are you getting questions? Yeah. Could offense be also attached to the spirit of jealousy? Yeah. Actually, I could say offense is attached to almost anything. It's kind of like fear, right? If, if you look at what are the main tools of the enemy against us, I would say offense and fear, right? Fear of, there's a lot of, lot of ways to be fearful and there's a lot of ways to be offended. It's, it's attached to anger, to envy, to jealousy, to um, embarrassment. Unforgiveness. Right? Unforgiveness, bitterness. It's attached to almost anything, right? Um, but it's uh, like, a, it's a foothold. It's an opening, a small opening. And when it's open, the enemy uses that to introduce more into your life, to get you deeper into that hole, right? So you, you got to look at that. Offenses like that and fears is the same way. Now, Romans are going back to what we we're talking about, that um, the Lord is that sending you, you know, sickness, problems, afflictions. Romans 8, 1 to 2, it says, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's talking about you and I, guys, right? We are free from the law of sin and death. We're free from the law, from that age of law. We are already in that age of grace. So I'm not going to talk more about this, but we ha we have a, a, a power hour on this one. But definitely, this is one of the main things. Now, I, I think she asked this question about, you know, what do I do if somebody is talking to me and they're offended at God? You know, share this truth, right? Don't be offended as well. I, I'm sure God is not offended. Right? When someone is offended at him, I'm sure, or talking against God, I'm sure God is not offended. Right, but our part here is to introduce the truth and to hopefully make them realize that you know what, whatever you're you're experiencing right now, that's not from the Lord. We have an enemy, right? And you know, start that conversation with them. Anyway, so that's the first one, imaginary. What's the second one? Accidental. I'm just gonna go through this very very quickly. This this is not really the main meat, but accidental. Accidental. Some something was said accidentally. You know, the person didn't re didn't mean to hurt you in any way. Nadulas lang siya, may nasabi against you, and then you got offended, right? Somebody said, oh, sis, are you pregnant? And of course, you got offended because you weren't. You aren't, right? You're not pregnant. <laughs> you just gain weight. But that's offensive, right? Or, um, again, bottom line is somebody... Is that or an somebody actual said, example again? Not me all. It's not an exact <laughs> example. Because <laughs> I said I was gonna say something, but then how come I'm offended? <laughs> well now, okay, let's or someone forgot an event, an anniversary, a birthday, or a special um uh, event in your life, and someone forgot forgot that. Again, it's accidental, it's not something that they are um, planning to do against you, right? But it's it happened you know and then the third one imposed okay imposed of what is this other people's influence when somebody talked to you come to you they're offended they talk to you right and then all of a sudden after that conversation you're also offended at the person that the person that your friend is talking about right you don't know the person that that's the same example of, of uh dispersing this is uh the dispersing uh example you are offended for other people, right? You're offended for your friend. You're offended for, for someone um, that is venting out, right? Anyway, uh, okay, what's next? What's next? Mm, 
Okay, so the, the last one is actual offense. Okay, actual is, from the word actual, this is actual people who are, um, who are intending to hurt you. Yes, they want to see you fail. They want to see you fall. Uh, people with wrong intentions against you. Uh, unfortunately, there are people like that around us, right? It may be personal or maybe not. Maybe, um, maybe uh, like someone in the government or something like that. And then you got affected, of course. But, you know, it could be personal or not. But bottom line, government, family, friends, other people, uh, there are actual offenses, right? And this is when um, we're not justifying, right? We're not justifying what they did, that it's okay, right? But understand that getting offended is not the solution, right? Even though it's justified. Because this adds to the problem. And it's not to them, right? It, this adds to your burden. This, this adds to your problem because it blocks the flow of promises and blessings of the Lord in your life. You got to think it. You need to understand that that's just how it works. That, that is what happens in the spirit realm. Right? When you get offended or when you allow yourself to get offended. Now, how do you reverse this? Let's talk about this. this is the main meat. Yes, go ahead. You know, sometimes uh, it depends where, it, where the words came from. Mm -hmm. Okay, for example, if someone said something and I don't really think much because about that person, because one, we don't have a relationship. Number two, he doesn't understand where I'm coming from because he doesn't experience all that big deal. It's like in a lower level of revelation, then he shouldn't really be offended. You know, that's more like a distraction. It's like, why? That's not even something you should be paying attention to. However, if it's someone you look up to, okay, someone, a, a, a parent, a spiritual parent, or a, a mentor, a coach, or someone that says something, and you could see from their experience that they're farther ahead of you revelation wise in terms of you know, and then they say something and it just rattles you and if you're offended then you have to really um i think ask the holy spirit why am i offended what happened yeah because I, that it's not an intentional offense by the way that's there's what something happens in when, your heart that you need to yeah, deal with to deal with in order to you know that's why you have a, you know your spiritual mentor or spiritual parent you know that's that's different so it depends where those who are coming from so you have to discern don't they're not all the same that's my point makes sense yes and and that's why we have those different kinds of offense right and and um again that that's a good point because you Words really are. have to look at your heart and say why am i offended Right. Even though with, with people that you don't know, I, I, I see this uh, post by Irene. It's true. Right. Political posts. It's so common now. We just started a few days ago. I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's a lot of political posts. Right. And you know what? A lot of people are getting offended. And check your heart. Why am I getting offended? Is this even and as what Saudi said, is this even something that I need to pay attention to? Right? Or is this just a distraction? Ganda -ganda ng araw mo when you wake up and then you read all of these posts and then all of a sudden your day is like blah, right? Your day is, is full of, of inis and irritation. And because of those things that you got offended with. And maybe start asking yourself, why am I offended, Lord? Right? What's in my heart? What do I need to fix in my heart? Because bottom line, it's in your heart. Right? It's, it's a heart matter. like a kind of like uh you know women it's like Ang ganda -ganda ng araw mo. you just posted your pink lenny thing about sporting lenny and then you woke up and your best friend is supporting bong bong marcos and like oh, oh my gosh unfriend <laughs> best friend <laughs> i'm just I i'm not no, i'm just and it's like i could i could just imagine what's happening because to me it's just <laughs> wala lang. i'm not saying don't that, post um anything uh, for the person that you're supporting um you should i think you should because you know we we all are entitled to our own opinions right but what i'm saying again is do not get offended watch your heart right watch your heart and make sure that you are you're not going to fall into this trap anyway okay let me continue now 
Okay, so how do you overcome? How do you reverse, right? How do you reverse? Okay, I'm not, um, th these are not steps. These are ideas. And um, maybe you can take one or two that you can start applying in your life. It would be great if you can take all of them and start applying, right? But uh, you can take one or two and start applying in your life. And hopefully, um, you know, you, you'll be more ahead than where you are right now. Okay, first one, be quick to forgive and release offense be very quick because of what we've learned and what we have this what we have discussed hopefully you understand better right and because you understand better hopefully you're easily you can easily release forgiveness and release the offense acts 24 verse 16 this is apostle paul apostle paul right if apostle paul paul can say this and need to say this maybe we should as well he said, um, this is King James, I believe, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void to offense toward God and toward men. A conscience void to offense. No offense, right? Toward God and toward men. Now, this word he used, he says, I exercise myself, right? This word exercise it means to labor, to take pains, to strive, to discipline. That's why I'm saying, you know what? Not taking offense is actually a spiritual discipline, right? It takes effort. It takes effort. Choose to forgive and release forgiveness. Release the offense. It's a choice, right? It's a spiritual discipline. You have a choice to either focus on what the person said what the person did or focus on said and what god is doing right you have you, that's a choice and that's that's for you to choose you don't need to involve others with this one you know release forgiveness and when the person Is it me or Sal is uh, frozen? Frozen. Frozen. Okay, we're having some technical difficulties. So uh, uh, we're going to go on a commercial break. <laughs> I don't think Cell said she's out. Let me tell her. Your. And looks like her setting has just me or the speaker. Can someone else speak? I want to know if someone else can actually appear in Facebook besides me. Hola. Yeah. Ayan. Okay. Okay. Oh. Coach. <laughs> Honey, you're back? We can't be muted. Yeah. Yeah. Am, am I back? Yes. My gosh. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. So, am I also in Facebook still? Facebook. Yes. I am. Okay. I'm trying to connect to Gomo now. I think you're good. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Let's let's continue then. I'm not gonna worry Are about you? this. Okay, let's Okay, you see me, right? You hear me? You see me? That's all what, yes. what matters. There's a, there's a, okay, let's, there's a let's question. Go ahead and are, you, are you taking questions? I am. 
uh, let, let me continue and finish for now. Let me do that. Can you open all the questions and then we will continue? Is that good? Can you hear me? Are you guys hearing me? Saldi. Yes, yes. I don't hear I can anyone. hear you. Yes. Can okay. hear you. Yes. Can hear you. Yes. You're the only one that's not. Yeah. Everybody's saying yes. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. So as I as I was saying, this word exercise, right? To exercise myself. This is Apostle Paul talking. He said to labor, to take things, to strive, to discipline. Right? Um, it's choosing to forgive, and and again, taking offense. It's a trap. Right? It's a trap from the enemy. Not taking offense is a spiritual discipline in our lives. It's a spiritual discipline in our lives. And I think this is a good, good um, part. To, uh, this is a question from Evie. I want to handle this. She said, Paano po hindi pa apekto sa mga offenses na dinidisperse ng tao sa paligid? There are instances where I find myself with an earshot of people who complain and grumble or rant. Now, what to do to not absorb all those emotions being dumped and being spread around. So what do you do? What do we do, right? Um, as I said, you know, there are many opportunities to get offended, right? You hear people talking, even though it's not about you, right? But they're angry, they're offended, they're mad, right? Now, the thing is, you always have a choice. Do you allow that to impact you, to affect you or not? So as I said, it's a choice, right? This is a choice. Do you allow those emotions to get to you, to distract you or not? And a lot of times we do allow those things if we don't have anything important to do, right? But if you have so much more to do, if you're focused on what God wants you to do, if you're focused on something that's really important in your life, those things are just distractions, right? You can just easily um, choose not to... to you don't have time, right? You don't have even time to look at them. So um, let's move to something. number two. Yes. About the fence, it's like, yeah, a lot of times it's a distraction. You have to, I guess one of the key points here is that understand offense is the enemy's way to steal something from you. Done. What is he trying to steal? Sometimes your relationships, your friendship, he's trying to break it and destroy it, number one. Have an opportunity in your hand, but then because fence, you don't want anything to do yeah. with an opportunity I'm not, that will give you a breakthrough, uh, you know, mm -hmm. or there's a, someone's talk, talking to you about, you know, some sort of uh, healing that you totally disagree with because it's, it's not from your church or it's not from the denomination, the teaching, and you're offended with the teaching without even asking the Holy Spirit if that is the truth. The enemy is trying to distract you so that you don't go to a breakthrough or he's stealing something from you. That's the only reason why I can That's see why, why you are offended and you're playing. Yeah, why you're oh, you're playing in the enemy's hands, and I see that in you know examples in my life actually. Anyway, what, I just wanted to, I just wanted to another point. I'm not gonna go to my examples in my life. <laughs> 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 Do you want me to I'm pour out heart and start crying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what, I, I, saw, uh, I saw a question from MJ, like how do you minister to someone who is full of offense, right, in, in their hearts and in their lives? I can't see the, the question anymore. Um, but you know what, guys? Um, and this is uh, what I see in a lot of, I guess you, it's just normal, question? I guess, for people. Uh, yeah, can you read the full question? So how do we minister to a person that not even offenses all her life? So it's a lady. <laughs> so there's a hint. <laughs> it's a woman. What must not offend the mababai? Anyway, walang no, na deal na or na release na for walang na deal or na release na forgiveness at naging hardened heart and matinding anger. So no, no forgiveness. Yeah. And yeah, I can see. How do you how do you minister to someone na ganon? Hey, you know what? And, and a lot of times, and medio um, close minded and close minded to forgive. Yeah. Okay. That's can a cool I, question. Yeah. So a lot of times, I don't know, people are looking for that one candy, right? Give me one pill 
that if I could swallow every problem, every lie and deception, every unbelief in my heart is going to be gone. Can I, can I have that one pill? And people are looking for that. <laughs> in, in our, I see this a lot, guys. And even uh, sometimes they see, for example, deliverance as, as one of that pill right they say oh deliverance can I have a deliverance because I know and, and I'm not saying that deliverance is not a solution but it's a solution to many many steps right it took a lot of years and even probably decades for this person to get to where she is right with what like you said hardened heart already so it took a lot of years for her to get to where she is. So definitely it will, it will be a process. It's a renewal of the mind. It's a process of renewing, right, of our minds. And that's not going to be in one day. It's not even if you take hours and hours of deliverance or even if you, if you um, spend many, many deliverances with this person, right? It's not going to happen if the person doesn't take the same amount of time meditating on the word of God that time that she spent meditating on all the offenses and all the anger and all those, those things that were so wrong, right? So best way, definitely start ministering, right? Start introducing the word of God and little by little, you know, and it's a choice. It's salvation is a choice. Salvation is a choice. So is renewal of the mind. You know, a lot of times people, when they get saved, they think renewal of the mind is an automatic thing. It's not automatic. Right, it's 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 another choice that you need to make. Do you want to do you want to be a Christian, but um, but miserable <laughs> because you didn't or you don't want to take the time to to renew your mind, or do you want to be a Christian and victorious in your life? Then spend the time to renew your mind. Then you know study the Word of God. Then be a disciple. And so these are the things, but yeah, you know, um, deliverance definitely one, and then go through the discipleship process and and start that because for you to expect that one time deliverance all done it's solved it's not going to happen right um they the person needs to that. understand and, and know the truth before they they change their ways yes i'll be yeah uh because i've seen this in ministries and churches there are some ministries that deliverance deliverance cast out the demons boom boom, boom. okay that's one side and then there's the other side inner healing inner healing healing process inner healing discipleship it's one or the other our Combined. opinion and i think you stand with me this it's it's actually both yeah you cannot do inner healing all the time if the demon's there keep on whispering and all that it gets you know, that's why the inner healing is not that it's taking so long but if you know it's demonic why don't you just cast out the demon yeah then Without the demon, it's probably easier to do the, the discipleship person. and inner healing. Okay. The yes. problem with casting out the demon and no discipleship and inner healing, what does it say in the Bible? You cast out the demon, the demon roams around looking for friends or looking for a place for a, a new body, can't find one, comes back and sees the heart of the person. It's all clean and sweet, and then invites seven friends more worse than him and comes back. That's where inner healing and discipleship comes in. That's why you can't just do deliverance and you can't just do inner healing. It's actually combined. If you guys did not know that, that's why that's why I wanted to, uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, stress that out. I've seen it one or the other, but our belief is that, you know, if you're discerned there's a demon, cast the demon out first, then do the inner healing or vice versa. Does that make sense, yeah. guys? And a lot of times you don't need to like, go through this this process you know like because that's that's why we equip you guys and you i think everybody here knows right Diva? how do you do that how do you cast out how do you command right these are the things that um i mean you are i don't think with. everybody here knows honestly go through this spiritual I don't think warfare everybody class here knows. <laughs> <laughs> anyway but that's the goal right then that's that's why we're here we're learning you know it's a journey of learning it's a journey of equipping and empowering anyway so let, let me go to uh step number two i, I see more questions but uh, sally if you can gather them all anyway i'm gonna go to number two very practical guys number two talk to the person directly whoever uh got offended whoever you're offended with right who hurt you, who said something to you, or who did something, 
right? Talk to the person directly. And this is not for every situation. I just have to say, be careful with this one because if the person is really angry at you, right? You may not want to know or want to hear what he or she has to say more, right? Uh, if you approach him, baka lalo ka lang maging offended. Um, so it's not for everybody. This is bottom line is asking the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, do I need to talk to the person, right? Because the imaginary things could easily be um, taken care of with this one. You know what? I got hurt with what you said. Is, Did this you is, really that's mean? Very, this, this very... That's very dangerous with husband and wife because when that imaginary wife is imagining a lot of things, when you approach them, it's not a good idea. Seriously, from experience. <laughs> no, I mean, you can say, did you really mean that I was fat? When you said this, did you mean that I was fat? <laughs> you can ask that. You can ask the person directly. I don't know if this is just an example, guys. But um, bottom line, you ask the Holy Spirit, right? Because it may oh may uh, just be another way of getting you hurt more. Um, anyway, so that's number two. Number three, uh, this next three points is connected to this ver these two verses that I'm going to be reading to you guys from Philipp Philippians 1, verses 9 and 10. Uh, verse 9, it says, In this I pray, and again, Apostle Paul, right? Apostle Paul is speaking, This I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, in verse 10, it says that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Okay, I'm going to, these two Bible verses I'm going to use for my next three points. You know, Apostle Paul said, I pray that your love may abound yet more, right? More and more, right? Your love. Now, what it's talking about here, this word love is from the word agape. It's the agape kind of love. It's God's kind of love. So Apostle Paul is talking about here, you need, we need to understand God's love for us and for other people, right? Understand the heart of our Father for us and for other people, right? And this is, again, going back to how do you do that? Read the Word. Read the Bible. Right? When you read the Bible, you understand and you will see. What is the message of the Bible? It's about God. Yes. And what else? It's about what he did for you and I. Yes. And then what else? It's actually the story of God and his people. God and us. So bottom line, it's not just, we're not just talking about just knowing God. But when you read the Bible, you see us, right? When you when they say keep your eyes on Jesus, okay, keep your eyes on Jesus. You seek God, you seek Jesus, you focus on Him, you keep your eyes on Him. And my dog's crying. Can I just open the door for him? <laughs> he wants to go out. Joey, sorry guys. That's why this is what happens when I have live calls. Anyway, so it says keep your eyes on Jesus, and when you do. You know what? Uh, Jesus said that what you will see, you will see the Father. You will see the Father in me when you seek me. And the more you seek God, the more you seek about the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, you know what you find? You will find yourself in the midst of it. When you open God's heart, you will actually see you in his heart. Right? You will see you and you will understand yourself better when you seek God, when you understand the love of God and really um, dig deeper of what is the meaning of the love of God. You'll find yourself in his heart. But of course, the spirit of religion will say you're, you're nothing without God, right? Okay, that's true, but you're never without God. You have received Jesus in, in your life and the word says that he will never leave you nor forsake you, right? And then the spirit of religion will also say, you are a sinner. You are a filthy rog. You know, you, you're already, but you're already saved, right? So you're not a sinner anymore. You're not supposed to be living in guilt and condemnation, right? But I'm 
understanding God's love for you, you actually have this sense of confidence and superiority inside of you that you are valued, right? That you are valued in the eyes of God. And again, I'm not talking about being proud or, or arrogant with this, but um, it's seeing yourself how God sees you. And because of that, you gain that confidence, right? And when you do that, your love, that love inside of you will overflow to other people. I think when you start talking about God's love, this is what it means. It's understanding God and then understanding who you are. And then it overflows in the people around you. Um, we've actually discussed this in detail. We had a call, The Essence of Christmas, in December of 2021. You can listen to that one, but um, that's, that's in detail about God's love for us. So anyway, so practical uh, application uh, of this one uh, as well is reminding yourself, not only of God's love for you, right? But reminding yourself, Again, in, in our case with Saudi and I, it's reminding myself that my husband loves me. You know, sometimes he says things and I get offended. And then I remind myself, wait a minute, you know, he loves me. He's not going to say something because he wants to hurt me, right? Intentionally wants to hurt me. Or maybe application to your parents. You know, my, your parents said something. It's, again, accidental offense, right? They said something. They didn't mean it. You took it the wrong way, but then remind yourself, wait a minute, my mom and dad, they're always there for me. They love me. I mean, so why would they intentionally good, hurt me? I'm going to take that that uh, portion and record it. And then when <laughs> the next time, I'm just going to replay it for you. I'm just going to send you via Viber that portion that you just touched. Very good. <laughs> Feel free to do so. <laughs> but listen, guys, confess it with your mouth, right? But, but there's power to, um, sometimes you, you just think it, but there's power to just confessing the truth and confess it out of your mouth. Anyway, and, and again, if everything else fails, if, if really, okay, if your spouse or your parents, um, you're not in good terms and they they're, um, did not treat you well, okay, if everything fails, remind yourself of yeah. God's, God's love for you. God loves you no matter what. God values you. He died for you on the cross, for you, for your life. Right? Anyway, so let's go to uh, the next one. See things in the spirit. Again, it's from Philippians 1, 9 to 10. Verse 9 says, and this I pray that you love me abound yet more and more. We talked about that, right? In knowledge and in all judgment. Now, when you talk about this word in knowledge, this knowledge means um, knowledge of things that are ethical and divine. It's talking about the knowledge of divine things. So it's not just knowledge, data, information. We're not talking about that, right? Apostle Paul is talking about the knowledge of divine things. So you need to understand when you get offended, what is really happening spiritually, right? What is happening spiritually? Remind yourself of the enemy's tactic of the enemy's attack, of what is the purpose of offense in your life? What? To block you from experiencing the good things, to block the promises of the Lord in your life, to block these things from you so that you do not receive blessings from the Lord. These are some of the many reasons, right? Now, increase your knowledge and understanding. Now, Philippians 1.9, in the TPT version, it says, bringing you into the rich revelation of spiritual insights in all things. Again, divine revelation, divine understanding, right? Philippians 1.10, in NLT version, it says, for I want you to understand what really matters. Now, this Apostle Paul is saying, this is what really matters. Understanding of what's happening spiritually is more important than understanding what is happening in the physical. The physical is given. You know, anyone can tell you what is really happening in the physical, right? It's obvious. But the thing is, Apostle Paul is saying, you know what? Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to the things that are happening in the spirit realm. Understand the divine things. Understand what is happening spiritually. And when you do, you're more equipped. When you do, you're more empowered. So you can speak against these things because you know, wait a minute, this is a trap, right? I'm not going to get into that trap. I'm not going to allow the enemy right, to, to block the promises, to block the things in my life. Right, and then the last one from from this Philippians is 
recognizing the excellent things. Again, it says in Philippians 1.9, actually 1.10, is that, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now, okay, so understand God's love, it says in verse 9, and see things in the spirit and increasing your knowledge of the spiritual uh, things, right? And then when you do, when you know these two things, right, then you, you are able to what, approve things that are excellent. What does this mean, approve? To approve means to recognize, to discern, to examine. You will approve, you will recognize, you will discern the excellent things in your life. God's best for you, his extraordinary ways. You are able to see them, right? And when you do, you don't have, you don't have time to get offended because you get excited. You get, you get motivated. You see what was in front of you. You see what God is doing and what he will be doing when you, when you start to see the excellent things that God had prepared for you. You see that how this is all interconnected. Now, when you don't have that, when you don't see the excellent things, then what do you see? You see the opposite, right? You see all the wrong things. You see all the negative things. You see all the bad things. And you see the offenses, the anger, the irritation, the fear, you know, all of these things, unbelief around you. So again, it's just changing that focus. Then the next one is, are we, everybody's okay? Let me just, uh, since it's not 18, okay. Uh, the next one is remind yourself of God's word. Surround yourself with people who will remind you of the word of God. So it's reminding yourself with the word of God, right? And then at the same time, make sure you are surrounded with people that will remind you when it's necessary, right, of the word of God. Now, the story of Naaman, uh, we read in 2 Kings 5, is a good example, right? He had his servants. Uh, to, to tell him, you know what, maybe you should look at this. Maybe you should consider this, right? It's for your own benefit. And so he did. He obeyed what um, Prophet Elisha told him to do. So that's one, right? I'm going to give you an, another example. Well, let me just pause for a minute. You need someone who, I'm just going to give you some, some of the things that I will want to look for, right? Who will not say what you want to hear, right? When you're venting out, when you're hurt, when you're offended, you're going to talk to someone. You need someone who will... Not just going to say what you want to hear. Oh, oh, ma, tama ka. Yeah, oh, nga, no. Ay, ang, ang bad niya. You know, like agreeing with you. That's just, just so wrong because it's just adding fuel to the fire. Right? Number two, who will rebuke you of your thoughts and of your emotions? You know what? Sis, um, maybe you should um, be careful because you're getting emotional and you know, this is what the word says. And, and again, that's the, the third one is reminding you of what the word of God is saying, right? So hopefully you have um, some friends that are like that. It will give you have a question. some insights, remind you of the word of God. Yes. So what if your friends, whenever you're pushing on talking like that, they always just agree and agree with you all the time. You're saying not to have those type of friends. No, like I'm not that. saying get rid of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, I'm not. Hey, guys, again, do not hear what I'm not saying, right? I'm not saying get rid of your friends um, like that. But uh, again, especially in those moments when you are offended, you just have to make sure that um, you ask the Holy Spirit first, okay, Lord, who sh should I share this with? Should I even share it with anyone, right? Um, and then if, if I do, then who should I share it with? But I'm not saying get rid of your friends, okay? But especially in those moments of, of, of uh, the very emotional moment for you, right? And you're not really seeing what you're supposed to see. Then you need, you need someone, uh, a spiritual mentor, right? To, uh, to help you see what you need to see. Now, here's an example. John the Baptist, he paved the way, right, to, uh, to Jesus. And he said, you know, in John 1, chapter 1 of John, right, talking about Jesus, he said, but among, among you stands one, you do not know, he's talking to the Pharisees, among you, who, who, among you stands one, you do not know, he is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy, worthy to 
untie. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's what he said about Jesus, right? Now jump to Matthew 12, Matthew 11, actually. Matthew 11, when John was placed in prison. And then so what he did, he sent his disciples to Jesus and asked, are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? <laughs> now he started doubting himself, right? It is very obvious. And it sounds like John the Baptist was offended. He was offended. He's in prison. He's probably suffering there. So he's thinking a lot of things. And so he sent his, his disciples. Now, here's how Jesus responded to John's question, right? Matthew eleven four 4 to 6. It says, Jesus answered and sent to them. Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Okay, now what do these mean, right? Jesus, when he talked about um, again, all of these things, he was pertaining, you know, he knows John the Baptist knows the word of God, right? He knows, John the Baptist know he knows the scripture. So what did Jesus do? He, per, he was pertaining to the Old Testament scripture. It was actually in Isaiah 61, 1 to 2. And I'm just going to read this to you. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Again, this is in the Old Testament, Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 2. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. There's actually more in Isaiah 29, 17 to 19. I'm not going to read those. And Isaiah 35, 3 to 6. But read those things. Those are all written in the Old Testament. And bottom line, what Jesus is saying is that what I did today, right, is actually accomplishing those words from the Old, the Old Testament. Jesus responded to John the Baptist and allowed him, helped him process his offense. I need to admit people. Can you admit, uh, Sally? Pro Process his offense by reminding him of the word of God. Reminding him of the word, right? Now, us in our case, we need to remind ourselves of the word of God as well. Or, and or, I would say, have someone that we can confide, confide with, right? Who will help us remember what the word of God says about our situation. So this is big. Right. And again, you cannot remind yourself of what the word says if you do not know the word. You need to know the word first. When you know, then that's when you get reminded, right? When it's when it's necessary. And also having people around you to remind you. Now I'm gonna insert here a question again from Evie. She said, Paano po handle ang offense, knowing na need ng accountability and openness to divulge certain information para hindi magrat sa sarile. I mean to say, what if ako yung naka-offense naka tapos I want to talk to my leader about it para ma-process? How can I do it in such a way na hindi mag-disperse ng trash? Okay, so I hope you guys understand this. Bottom line, what she's saying is that um, she needs to speak to someone, right? And she wants to make sure that when she does, she doesn't disperse the offense. And she's saying that paano po i-handle yun? Um, Para hindi magrat sa sarili. Okay, that actually kind of um, was highlighted to me because I think it is a lie to say, right? Again, listen to this. It is a lie to believe that you always need to process your offense with someone else. It is a lie to say or to believe that you always need to process your offense with other people. A small group leader, a pastor, you know, a spiritual authority over you, anyone, a close friend. Right, because very, very first thing, process this with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is enough. He is our counselor, right? He is our guide. So He is enough to help you process your offense. Now, the thing is, the Holy Spirit will tell you then 
when you need to talk to someone or some people, right? Maybe their insights or their past experience will uh, help you, will bring more light to your situation, right? But again, it's, it's you and the Holy Spirit speaking and the Holy Spirit guiding you on the next steps on what you need to do to process this offense. But you know what, guys? A lot of times you don't have to talk to anyone. You don't have to. You know, Actually, um, from my experience, uh -huh. when, I, when I feel like I'm offended, I speak to my wife because my wife can hear from the Holy Spirit who can speak that to me. <laughs> it's true though <laughs> ideally you don't have to so sometimes right? because you can hear i know but well. a lot of times i realize a lot of things after i process it out with you and all of a sudden you say something and like and then you're always saying why are you so quiet because i know what you said just hit me and i'm processing what the Holy Spirit is talking, speaking to you about to bring to me. That's usually <laughs> what happens, husband and wife, by the way. But guys, I don't really advise that. I don't advise that because, again, you need to learn how to process it with the Holy Spirit. You know, um, I just have to say, like personally with us, with Saudi, uh, again, this is probably not the first time or second time or third time that you hear me talk about this before. Like from 20, I don't know, 15 to 2019, I would say, I, again, it's one of the hardest years of our lives. And I would say it's probably also the most uh, times that I was offended uh, with me and Saldi, with, with Saldi, right? And it's because we were, we were in a difficult situation. We were in a diff difficult uh, financial situation, right? And it's just, there's always that, that stress that, um, uh, yeah, that clash happening and because of course he's stressed and i'm stressed and then we talk and then it just you know it happens and then i get offended right it's, it's for so many so many times and then what, what did i do i just go go run to the lord and just allowed him to minister to me allowed him to speak to me allowed him to speak his truth to me right uh, and and break the lies that i was believing I, I had I've come to a point where I was believing, you know what, para, you know, there's that yabang in, in my heart. And, you know, I'm paying for all of this. I'm, I'm, I'm the one making money. And why does he treat me this way? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Right. And you know what God said? Really, you do. Right. Really, you're the one providing. As if like God was saying, I'm the one providing, not you. Right. I, who, like I am, I am the one, you know, helping you in this process not just on your own and that was a big big of? big revelation to me wow those were the lies right <laughs> <laughs> whatever you know this these are a situation those were the lies that just come to your mind right when you are stressed when you are in in difficult situations but when i go back to the lord the lord reminds me no right you're not alone in this number one number two um I am the one providing, not you, right? So that just, you know, breaks my pride right there, right? So when you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, you don't need, a lot of times, again, you don't need someone. Um, but if you do, then of course, the Holy Spirit tells you, talk to this person, he has experience, she has experience the same way, and, and she can give you more light to your situation, then go ahead and do that, right? Anyways, um, I think I'm done. So I hope a you question. guys. Yes, let's let's talk about questions now. Is is holding on to an offense considered as self righteousness? Holding on to an offense considered as self righteousness is that the question? Probably right. Yes. Because then you don't you don't um, you're not allowing the the word of God to minister to you because when you hold on to offense that means you want to believe the lie you want to continue believing the lie then you're probably your bottom line saying no to the word of god right i don't want it i don't want the truth i don't want to submit my emotions and my will to the lord right then definitely that is self-righteousness i can't hear you Saudi. I'm not speaking. 
Ah, okay. Is that it? That's all I see because I, I can't see the other questions, but I don't think there were other ones. But in case there are, you always answer in the manual, right? You go in the Facebook group. I can't see any questions. Yeah. Um, Evie said, it's not a question, but she said, uh, no, yeah, there's comments. Well, yeah, you don't always need to have a process of friends with someone. You need the Holy Spirit to speak to you first and then listen if he instructs you to talk to someone. Noted. I think this is freeing because it means I go to God directly. Yeah, you know what? Ultimately, kasi you're, you're accountable to the Lord, right? And the Holy Spirit is your counselor. Yeah, don't always have to open things to others. So offense, yes. Um, anything else? But then there is a point. I mean, Proverbs, if you look at Proverbs, guys, there's a lot of verses that talks about counsel, right? Getting counsel. So there's definitely a room and a space for counsel, for the right counsel. Okay. So again, you're not, it, you got to check your heart and say, are you just sharing this so to vent out and to find someone to share that emotion with you? Or um, did you pray about it? And after you prayed, you felt, led to talk to someone to get counsel because um again there's nothing wrong with getting counsel but it's right the right counsel from someone who can guide you and feed you the word of god right and and definitely again the, the proverbs is full of of wisdom regarding having the right counsel and that's uh, also there's wisdom to that to getting counsel how do you separate requiring respect with offense like if your employees was rude with you or a student or a child? How do you separate respect with offense? Uh, um, can I answer that? If a student was yes. rude with me, I'll kick him out of my group. Okay. A, a student or a child? If I can't kick out the child. <laughs> I don't know. You answered that, honey. <laughs> I can only relate yeah. to uh I, I can relate to I guess with I can relate to to student to a child. Um it's understanding that okay, my the child or my child is rude to me. Why? Right? It's understanding, okay, there is something here, there's something going on behind this. It's not just I don't think your child is is rude to you or disrespectful to you just because. Right. There's something there is there's another emotion. There's another thing that's happening behind that. There's a reason yeah, why. Yeah. And they cannot express themselves properly. You know, there's some hurt. A lot maybe. of times, there's another a lot offense. Of times, yeah. A lot of times as parents, you you know your child. You know when your child yeah. is acting differently, like being mm -hmm. rude, etc. We mean something's yes. up. And it's my job as a parent to understand and dig in so that I know what to, how to advise because I need to understand yeah. where it's coming from. And a lot of times uh, they're going through something and then probably someone said something and then probably the enemy is saying something and all that. I want to see how the enemy is using this to attack my, my child. And now, now they're upset at me, etc. You know, you have to keep yeah. in mind, guys, especially your children. Your children is not your enemy. Yeah, that's why again it's important to know. Enemy. It's important yeah. to understand what is really happening spiritually, right? When you understand yeah. what is happening spiritually, then you see, okay, this rudeness here, this is this is not the root cause. You know, there's something else behind this. What is right? And you deal with that, right? So then that takes care of the offense right away. Don't focus on the offense. Focus on what's going on with my child. There's something here, right? This is not normal. This why is he or she being disrespectful? I, you know something like that. So question, again, what, what, yeah. What do you do when uh, your employee was rude with you? Well, my first, if this was me, I was like, is this guy replaceable? Okay, fine. I'll find a replacement. <laughs> fire him. Done. Now I can focus on other things. I'm the Holy Spirit. That's a that's <laughs> a worldly is, don't, point of view. Yes, do not listen to Sally. All right. But Do no, no, because it right could be, <laughs> yeah, that, that could be one. That could be one actually, because this employee could be um, a bad apple. Now, if, if, and again, it's also in a Proverbs, exactly. right? It's yeah. also in Proverbs. If, if there is a bad apple in that thing, you got to get rid of that because otherwise it's going to rot the entire basket. 
So in this in this case, is, is that yeah. the solution? Or maybe there again, there's something happening in the, in the person's life and you are there to minister yeah. to the person. So again, there's no right or wrong. Yeah, you, it's you asking know, the Holy Spirit. You, you know, a lot, a lot of times it's, you know, when if that's not their norm, by the way, and all of a sudden something like that happens, something's happening. So you have yeah. to be the, you know, ask the Holy Spirit. And most, a lot of times you, you just have to understand, you know, and then minister. Exactly. However, that's their norm. Then you ask the Holy Spirit, you know, is this the right person here? Because, you know, you're, it's affecting everybody else. It's affecting yeah. me, et cetera. Because you're there to store the, the business. Then you fire them and replace them. <laughs> So back to yeah. see, you just made it nicer. Back to honey. it goes going, back to the Bible going back and you're... listening to the Holy Spirit. No, <laughs> no, not necessarily, uh, right? So anyway, I'm just is kidding, guys. What, don't do that. Is this what we call tamang hinala? Ano yung tamang hinala? Paki explain yeah, Marvin, di ko alam. <laughs> what does tamang hinala mean? And what is this? Like, what is this? Uh, yeah, I'm not understanding that. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah can you... If, First of all, I don't know what you have time on in Yeah, yeah, so can you expand on that if um, you have time? Anyways, let me see. Or, yeah, so how many do we or have? Or you can just answer that later. Yeah, we can answer this later. Or Tama Hinala really is people. assuming. Stop. You're assuming. You're assuming something. Uh, being Tama suspicious. Hinala is being suspicious. Yeah. And you learn that you were right. Ah, uh, are you talking about so, your employee? So is this what? You know yeah. what? This applies to what we talked about. If you are assuming something, just talk to the person and ask. You know, you know, you were rude to me today again about the employee saying you're rude to me today. You said this, and I didn't appreciate that. But um, how's everything with you? Is is everything okay with you? You know, just ask. Again, set aside the offense, right? This is not about you. This is not about you. If people around you are being um, rude or not being nice, right? There's something going on inside of them. So you're there to be the light. So ask. You say, what is going on, right? May masakit ba sa iyo? May problema ba sa bahay? May problema ba sa, sa family? And, and maybe is there something I can help you with? You know, something like that, right? So... And maybe, I don't know what the tamang hinala is, maybe if you have suspicion and wala naman nangyayari or walang problema, then maybe the person is just rude and just not nice, period. Then, then yeah, you can give them a warning and kick them out after Aram. three warnings. See? You know, after honey, three. Paikot, ikot lagi. It all goes back to the exact <laughs> same solution I gave it. No, because, not necessarily. That's understand. what I'm saying. Not necessarily, right? Um, if someone you love I'm curses kidding, you guys. because... I'm just kidding, guys. Anyway. Yeah. If, if someone you love curses you because they don't want to get what they want, because they don't want they don't want to get what you want. What, what does that mean? If someone you love Honey, you can't curses read. Hold on. you. What if someone you love oh. curses you because they don't get what, they are not getting what they want. From so you. They want from something. You. you said something else. They're not uh, getting it from you. They started swearing at you. What do you do? Like maybe asking money from you <laughs> and then something like that. And then so they started cursing you. And then they started... What? Yeah, and okay. then in what the world, you start cursing back, right? <laughs> away, away, away na. But of course, we're not first step, like that. <laughs> reverse, reverse, first step, right? Be so quick to forgive and release offense, right? Because again, you know what, guys? It's just always reminding yourself, at least for me personally, right? Throughout this learning, hey, we're learning together. I'm also learning in this process, right? Throughout this learning, I, I have realized that, you know what? I'm not going to disperse any kind of offense, number one, I'm going to at least, you know, have that spiritual discipline to not just, you know, be offended and speak, speak, speak about it. It's just allowing the Holy Spirit to deal with me and minister to me on that one and be easily forgive because the thing is, it, it is against me, right? If I do not forgive, if I don't release my offense, it's going to be very difficult for me to receive from the Lord. And I don't want that, right? I want God's best for my life. I want to receive the, the most that I could 
from the Lord, right? And so what do I do? Just, you know, it does, it's, it's not worth it, at least for me personally. So then for you, it's not worth it, right? To, to deal with that and just cancel all the curses that's spoken against you and just say, I forgive you. And, um, you know, I'm sorry that the person does not understand my situation, my financial situation, why I cannot give at this time. And I try to explain. And, and if he or she cannot understand, then I, I'm sorry, right? But I forgive and I release uh, my offense. And then move on, right? And then do, go back to what we're doing. Go back to what God had called you to do. Honey, I, go back to the so, important so, stuff. So much easier said than done. That's everybody's I know it's mind, easier anyway. said than done. <laughs> that's why it says, that's why, you know, I can relate to Apostle Paul. He said, I exercise myself. You know, this is like training. It's training yourself. It's, it's, it needs well, discipline and self-control, right? To train yourself to do the right things and to choose the right things. Okay. I think we're, we're done. If you guys want to join us in our small group, you can join us. Um, and you can join in Zoom. If not, I think we're done with, with Facebook. No more questions? I don't see any more questions. Um, Why don't you just close prayer and then we'll end it on Facebook and yeah. then we'll just continue in a Zoom breakout. So basically in Zoom, we have a breakout session uh, you know, to discuss yeah. a topic. Pero, please, pero just, konti lang, so maybe tayo lang. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's, but anyway, if you guys, in, if you're on Facebook and you want to join us, click on the Zoom yeah. and so that's here and then we're just going to break out in the room and if there's too many people or we'll just discuss here. Yeah, we'll just discuss. Okay. Let's pray. Lord, thank you and we praise you and we glorify you, Lord. Um, thank you for our discussion tonight. Lord, we... Um, Whatever it is that's holding us up right now, any offense, uh, I, I pray that each one of us will have a revelation of these things, Lord God. Offense against other people, against family, against friends. Lord, I, I ask Holy Spirit, reveal those things to us so that we can deal with them. We can process them using the what we have talked about tonight. Um, Lord, I pray Philippians 1, 9 to 10 to each one of us, um, as Apostle Paul said that, I pray and he prays and I pray for everyone that our love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, in the knowledge of things that are divine, of things that are in the spirit. Holy Spirit, just have that overflow in our minds and in our hearts and so that our love may abound, increase, not just um, our love for other people, but our love for, for you, O oh Lord God, and our love for um for ourselves and knowing who we really are in Christ. And then a verse that it says that we may approve the things that are excellent and may be sincere without offense until you come, Lord Jesus. Lord, that, that's our prayer, that we are able to see the excellent things around us. I just break every, every offense, every blockage, everything that's stopping us from from seeing what you are doing in our lives, Lord, from seeing the blessings, from seeing the little things, even the little ones, Lord God, that you are doing for us, Lord God. I just break those offenses. I break any anger, anything that's stopping us from seeing those things. And we see the excellent things that you have uh, provided and that you are doing, going to be doing as well in our lives, and that we may be sincere and pure without offense in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for this. This is our prayer. And we praise you, Lord. We glorify you. And um, Lord, I just pray as well that we have, we gain that, um, uh, the confidence and, and boldness to just ask forgiveness. If we thought of um offend that we may have offended other people before and we are led we are led to apologize and 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 talk to that person i just pray for confidence and boldness lord god to just obey and uh, so that we break whatever this thing that's holding us from breaking through in our lives i thank you lord for this 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 day and this night lord god we praise you and we glorify you in jesus name amen amen, amen. Good night, See you everybody guys in, in Zoom. Good night. Bye bye. Okay, so who do we have?
here. It looks like we have Jan, Rachel, Martin, Cindy, Noreen, Gonzalez, Aine, Robert, Irene. Okay, so this is a KFX meeting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a 